this is an embarrassment. Uh, this is an embarrassment to me. This is an embarrassment to humanity. This is awful. <laughs> I, I would be fired if my employer knew that this was the state of my home network rack. This is just, there's no excuse for this. Um, the reason why it exists, again, not an excuse, but the reason uh, is because over the years, you know, I had the right idea in the beginning, but over the years, changes are made, stuff's installed, stuff's ripped out, and I just never took the time to really properly keep this up in the state that it needed to be to be kept in and now functionally this network works great uh it functions we we have excellent service in this house from the wi-fi to the hardwired connections everything from a functional standpoint is fantastic from an aesthetic perspective this is deplorable and and again no excuse but we're going to fix it today I am going to completely overhaul everything. I'm going to reroute these cables the way they should have been done originally. I'm going to dress all the cables. I'm going to add in an additional patch panel and an additional switch to accommodate these extra cables that have been run. Uh, I'm going to rip out the old stuff that's no longer being used. Uh, we're we're going we're gonna to fix it all. Uh, I'm going to do uh, an overhaul of, of the networking. So I've been running a Microtik router in here and I'm going to remove that and I'm going ubiquity. I'm going to go full ubiquity. I've been using Unify for years now, for as long as we've lived here, uh, but I've always paired it up with Microtik. Well, ubiquity finally released a, a router that, that is going to work for me and it has the uh, Unify controller built into it. And so uh, I'm taking the plunge and I'm just going to go full ubiquity. So I'm excited. I'm excited. Now, you may be wondering why I'm doing a network video when I'm primarily a home theater and movie channel. Well, the foundation for any home theater is a good network. Without a solid network, you really don't have much of a home theater. Uh, especially, I mean, for sure, right off the top, streaming. You can't stream if you don't have a solid network. Uh, and even if you're purely physical media, which I don't know how that would even work, but it, let's say you're purely physical media, well, you still need to update your equipment. You know, your, your devices are all interconnected uh, between each other and, you know, out to the internet, firmware updates, et cetera, et cetera. So, so a solid, well-functioning network is the foundation for a home theater and so this is related to my home theater and I'm gonna fix it today let's get to it this cabling was just an embarrassing rat's nest I immediately started pulling out you know stuff that you know old power cables power bricks that were still plugged in that weren't plugged into anything uh, patch cables that were unused or the wrong length uh, I pulled that black box was an old NVR for uh, a security camera system that I no longer use. I mean, there was just so much stuff in there that is just out, not used or, you know, just taking up space and, and I'm going to be replacing. The cabling coming down from the ceiling, total mess. As you can see, the yellow cables were coming down, just hanging down straight from the ceiling. So I'm going to reroute all those. Those black cables, those are a bunch of cables that actually go up to the roof. I don't currently use them, but I want to keep them. And so I just coiled them up so that they're nice and tidy and then just tucked them up in the ceiling so they're out of the way and are, are really, you know, nice and tidy. So as I mentioned, I am pulling out the Microtik router that I've used for a long time and it's been a workhorse. It has just been an absolute tank, but switching all the way over to uh, Ubiquiti ecosystem entirely. So I have the brand new, it just came out a few months ago, the Ubiquiti Cloud Gateway Ultra. And this one, it, it, it can be a little tricky to find it in stock. Um, I had to buy this directly from the Ubiquiti website, um, but I was able to find it on, I just happened to get it on in stock on the day that I was buying. And so this is, this is it. It's kind of a sharp looking unit. Um, Let's see we'll just take it out here and yeah we got we got this guy here if I can get the packaging off of it 
pretty straightforward. Just a nice little white box, and I think all we're gonna have in the packaging is just uh, power supply and that's probably about it. Yep, just power supply and short little jumper cable. Um, but yeah, let's let's plug this thing in and we'll get this going and get it configured so that we have an internet connection. Actually, I'm going to use my other jumper instead of that one. It's a little beefier. So yeah, we'll get this plugged in here. I'm really excited to switch over to the Ubiquiti Gateway. I got the Cloud Gateway Ultra. I have been waiting forever for Ubiquiti to release a gateway that includes the uh, Unify Cloud Controller on board and it, you don't have to host it. I've been hosting it on my server. And so now it's just integrated right, right into the hardware. That's gonna be an awesome upgrade. I'm excited about that. Um, once I started in on this cabling, it actually, I mean, yeah, it's an absolute mess, but it wasn't quite as bad, or let's, yeah, let's put it this way. It wasn't quite as difficult to get it cleaned up as I feared it would be. Um, yeah, so once I got everything rerouted, I started terminating those yellow cables, and there are a few gray cables in there as well that, that uh, I had had just plugged directly into my switch. But now I'm adding in a patch panel. As you can see, I'm, I'm punching down the cables. Um, and so that will really clean things up to have those just tucked all the way in the back of the of the rack and then I'll be able to connect up uh, you know just short little jumpers from the patch cable over to the switch now you can see as I as I'm dressing those cables I'm using just velcro I, I used to use zip ties but velcro is preferable because it's much easier to remove and and reinstall so yeah pro tip velcro much better than zip ties um, but yeah, once I, once I got everything kind of tidied up, it started to look a lot better. Now I'm just using a simple TP link gigabit switch. Uh, you know, nothing fancy. It, I don't need it to do anything other than just connect up devices. Uh, and so I got it, I think it was like 90 bucks on Amazon for a 24 port gigabit switch. Uh, it's an unmanaged switch. So I, you know, you can't do anything fancy with it, but it's going to do exactly what I need it to do. So I'm getting it installed there and then, uh, you know, plugging in the power cable for it, getting it all all hooked up. And then at this point, I begin uh, installing patch cables from the patch panels to the switches. So now I have two patch cable or sorry, two patch panels and two 24 port switches. And each patch panel has 24 ports in it as well. Uh, and I'm using the correct uh, patch cable lengths now so I have three inch patch cables and six inch patch cables and by using the actual correct length it looks much better um, so now I'm reusing this old um, shelf that I had previously and so I've got that installed I've got the gateway plugged in and now I'm connecting up the ubiquity poe switch now this is a really cool switch because it has eight ports on it and four of them are poe so they will power my three access points i've already got two access points uh, but now you can see i'm adding a third i didn't really get very good coverage inside of my garage and so i am connecting up or right at this point i'm actually just uh, screwing in the mount that the uh, ubiquity ap the unify ap will connect to and the AP that I got for the garage, it's the Unify Swiss Army Knife. And this is what it looks like. It's just a really small, simple unit. Nothing fancy, but it will do uh, everything I need it to do. And I'll actually be able to install optional antennas on it if I, if I decide to. Uh, so yeah, there's the, the cable that will eventually, you know, it, the other end of it goes eventually down to the, uh, down to the basement. And then I plugged it in and... Just slide the, the Swiss Army Knife AP into the mount, and away you go. That's all there is to it. Now, I'm not going to just leave that cable hanging there. Uh, that's just temporary for, for now. Uh, I do plan to tack it along the wall and run it, you know, so it's nice and clean and out of the way. And so, yeah, that AP is now installed, powered up, and ready to go. All right, guys, it's done. 
I got it finished. I got it cleaned up. Um, I got to say, I was very hesitant to make this video because I was quite nervous about broadcasting to the internet the shameful state of my network rack. Uh, it was it was very embarrassing. I've, I've had people come over to look at my um, home theater and in the back of my mind, I'm like, I really hope they don't ask to see my network rack because I'll have to say uh, it's busy. Uh, it's not not available right now uh, because well, you, you saw it. So so now I've now I've shared it with everyone, um, but now we can see how it how it finally turned out, and I am really pleased um, with how it looks now. And it, yeah, let me let me turn the camera around and and give you guys a up close view here. So starting at the top up here, like you saw in the previous uh, videos, the cabling was just an absolute mess. It was a rat's nest up there coming down from different different locations. Um, that big coil up there, now it's tucked away and it's there to use if I ever do need uh, some lines up to my roof for whatever reason. Uh, everything is routed down here to this uh, rack everything you know I've, I used velcro so it you know it's not perfect by any means I'm, I'm under no delusions that this is a you know a top level job I'm just saying this is an improvement over what I had before um, I've got my battery backup system slash surge protector to run most of my stuff plugged in uh, it doesn't have a quite enough plug so I did have to you know extend out with a uh, power strip as well, but everything comes down kind of hidden behind the rack uh, into the patch panels. You can see with the patch panels, I've got everything fairly well organized with, you know, patch cables that actually are the right length for, for what they need to be. Uh, the top patch panel goes into the first TP-Link gigabit switch. The second patch panel goes into the second TP-Link switch. Um, and then this pink cable here, that one goes to my uh, Plex server that I use for streaming video off my local server. And then I've got my Ubiquiti Cloud Gateway Ultra. Uh, and that I have two lines. One goes to one switch and then another goes to the other switch. And then the third one goes to my Unify switch. And the beauty of this Unify switch is that it is a PoE switch. So it powers, it provides power to my Unify Ubiquity APs. Now, I have three Unify APs, and one of them is a legacy AP. It still works fantastic. It still functions very well, but it uses passive PoE, and this is a PoE Plus switch, so it's not able to be powered via this switch, and that's why I've still got this little PoE injector that that uh, lone holdout. So that powers the one AP that requires passive power, but these other two ports here, they are set to PoE plus, and so they power the other two APs. And from there, everything is just all tidy. This is my service line from my ISP. Uh, this powers their equipment. This PoE injector is for their equipment. And then this is my service line into my Cloud Gateway Ultra. All right, guys, that is the finished product. That is what we ended up with after that whole project. And I'm very pleased. I'm very happy. And yeah, have a great day. And thanks for watching.